Connecticut Food Bank is the state's nonprofit leader in the fight against hunger and is the largest provider of charitable food donations, helping more than 300,000 hungry residents across six Connecticut counties. I'm Eric Clemens for Comcast Newsmakers at Comcast's Connecticut studio. The interim CEO of Connecticut Food Bank, Paul O'Leary, joins Newsmakers now. Welcome to the program, Paul. Good morning. Tell us, what does the Connecticut Food Bank do? Connecticut Food Bank's mission is to provide nutritious food to people in need. And we serve six of Connecticut's eight counties. And we have a network of 700 partner programs encompassing 127 cities and towns that distribute more than 17 million meals last year to people in need. Tell us about what's new at the Connecticut Food Bank, and you got a lot of interesting stuff happening for you. So just in the last week or two, we moved to our new distribution facility in Wallingford, Connecticut, which is going to allow us to increase the services we provide to the growing need in the community. And uh, it's an 84,000 square foot distribution center that allows us to distribute much more produce where we're doing over 30 percent um, produce distribution alone. Can you talk about uh, some of the highlights of the distribution center, some additional highlights? Most of it is the refrigeration capacity and freezer capacity. We have a very strong focus on distributing nutritional food and with produce distribution at six to seven million pounds this year, we needed that increased storage capacity. We have the ability to engage the community to teach them about hunger in the, in the state today and look for volunteering opportunities with people to engage engage with us. We've talked about, we've read about, if you go to your website, about food insecurity and so forth. Can you, for us, draw the face of hunger here in our state of Connecticut? Sure. There's um, different ways to look at it. There's the poverty rates, which are about 10.5 percent. There's a food insecurity rate, which is about 14.5 percent. But I think most importantly, with the low unemployment rate, people are wondering why is the need growing so much. And there are challenges that people have meeting their financial budgets. It, with the high cost of living, if you're making uh, $50,000 and it costs 60 to live in a community, depending on the size of your family, there is a shortfall in your budget and people in that don't qualify for any type of assistance. So they turn to organizations like ourselves to help them make it through, the, through their budgeting process. Can you tell us a little bit about the backpack program? The backpack program is designed for uh, weekend meals for students who are food insecure or teachers have identified are not getting nutrition over the weekend. And we serve 3,000 students with weekly meals. It provides them four and a half meals um, over the weekend. And each one of the items is checked to make sure that it has nutritious quality of a meal, a snack, milk, and things like that. Right, that's a wonderful, wonderful program. Tell us, what do people out there in our audience not know about the people you serve? I think the biggest challenge is that many of them are working and they're struggling to meet their budgets and they don't have assistance that's available at the state or federal level. So um, they are fully employed. They could be working two jobs and they still are just challenged to meet the uh, choices between heat, rent, utilities, and health care. And food is an option that they have, and that, that's one of the reasons how they put, get put into food insecurity. And uh, another way you meet this uh, problem is mobile food pantries as well, correct? Our mobile food pantry has 31 sites throughout the state. Um, we distribute about 1.8 million meals on a program like that. And we distribute a lot of dairy items, produce items, is really pop up farmers markets in the communities that are located in different food deserts where there's a challenge to get nutritious food. Finally, Paul, tell people what they can do to get involved and help you. Um, they can always work with local programs. They can work, we're always looking to educate the community as to what hunger is, how to become aware of it, why people are challenged. We looked for people to come in to do volunteering opportunities where we're sorting food that we would recir recycle into um, our distribution model and to really donate. We do virtual food drives. We do virtual fund drives. All those things help to put a meal on the plate for someone who's food insecure. Paul, thank you very much for being with us on the program today. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Eric Clements. We'll see you next time.